Okay, guys. Detectives and Togas. We're going to read Chapter 3, A Bump of Considerable Diameter. So, we left off with the boys had gone early to their um, schoolhouse. And even before the sun had come up, and there was no schoolmaster. Mr. Xantippus was not there. And so... The, there was a curtain that divides the schoolroom from where, where the schoolmaster lived. And so they heard a groan behind the curtain. So that's where we left off. Here we go. Should we go in? Julius asked softly. Flavius protested, stammering with fright. Hadn't we better call the police? The others looked inquiringly at Muses. Inquiringly at Muses. On tiptoe, Muses approached the curtain. He paused in front of it and listened again. The noise had stopped. Did you know they had police in ancient Rome? They did. Maybe it was only the wind, he said. I never heard the wind groan like that, Pluvius murmured. Besides, there isn't any wind right now. Musius pulled himself together. Bring your lantern over here, Antonius, he ordered. I'll see what's the matter. Antonius brought the lantern. With one decisive movement, Musius jerked the curtain aside. Oh, he breathed in amazement and stood rooted to the spot. The others peered over his shoulders. There was only a tiny window in Xantippus's room, but in spite of the dim light, the boys instantly saw that something bad had happened. Almost all the furniture had been knocked over and scattered around the entire room were rolls of papyrus, pictures, files, writing tablets, and articles of clothing. Only the bed and a large wardrobe in the corner were still upright. We had that word papyrus several times in our reading. It's They didn't used to have paper like this. They had, it was a material and that's what they used to write on. Um, you spell it P-A-P-Y-R-U-S. And in ancient times, that's what they used. There was no sign of Xantippus at all. His bed was empty and the sheets were ripped. The boys were so amazed by it all that they forgot about the strange noise. Cautiously, Musius made his way through the litter of things on the floor. He stopped in the middle of the room and looked around, shaking his head in puzzlement. Crazy, he muttered. The others followed him, Flavius hanging back close to the entrance, ready to flee, asked anxiously, But where is Antipas? Antonius flashed his lantern into this tiny alcove which served as a kitchen. Not here, he reported. Then he looked under the bed. But Antipas was not there either. Where can he possibly be? Flavius wondered. He skipped out, Pluvius said, grinning. Yes, that's it, Antonius exclaimed. He sailed back to Greece because he's sick and tired of us. He had a fit of temper and knocked over all the furniture before he left. Pluvius laughed scornfully. I thought Lucas had turned him into a pig. Just then, the muffled groan was heard once more. This time it was louder and lasted longer. It came unmistakably from the corner where the wardrobe stood. The wardrobe is like a piece of furniture that's big and tall and has big doors that you open, like a big closet. The boys froze in their tracks. There's something in there, Musius whispered. A ghost, Antonius breathed. Let's get out of here, Flavius murmured. But the other stared hypnotized at the wardrobe. The groaning began again. And then there was a hoarse croaking. There's someone locked in there, Musius asked us, and said excitedly. He started to creep towards the wardrobe. Don't, don't open it, Flavius warned in a choked voice. Yes, Musius said. We have to. He might suffocate. It isn't a person, Antonius insisted. It's a ghost. A ghost can't suffocate. Shut up. Musius snapped. Ghosts don't sit in wardrobes in the morning. I'm going to open it. Give me some light. 
Antonio struck to the glow of his lantern at the wardrobe door, but his hand was trembling and the feeble light danced like a will-o'-the-wisp up and down the wall. More croaking issued from the wardrobe. The key was sticking in the lock on the outside. Musius boldly turned it, wrenched the door open, and stood back in amazement. In the wardrobe sat Xantippus, tied up like a bundle of old rags. His hands were bound behind his back, and a crude gag made of strips of sheeting had been wound around his face, leaving only his eyes and his unkept hair visible. Xantippus! the boys cried out. From under the gag there came an irritable croak. Why is he sitting in the wardrobe, Flavius asked. Xantippus produced a gobbling sound like a goose. He wants to get out, Antonius observed. Musia suddenly came to life. Don't stand around like dumbbells, he shouted at the others. We can't leave him in there like this. Come on, help me, get a hand. Xantippus was tightly wedged into the wardrobe, but by pulling together, they managed to pry him loose. He fell roughly to the floor, growling furiously. Musius unwound the gag, bent over their teacher and asked with concern, how do you feel? Instead of replying, Xantippus closed his eyes and heaved a sigh. <sighs> He's dying, Antonius said. At that, Xantippus opened his eyes again and growled ferociously. By Jupiter and all the heavenly gods, why did you wait so long? I almost suffocated. Quick, untie me. My arms and legs are dead. You'd better get a knife from the kitchen. Antonios and Pluvius managed to untie the ropes around Xantippus' legs. With the big bread knife that Flavius brought from the kitchen, Musius freed their teacher's hands. Xantippus moved his arms cautiously and began cl clenching and unclenching his fists, groaning softly. Help me, he ordered the boys. I can't stand up. The boys raised him to his feet and led him to his bed, where he sank down exhausted. After a while, he began feeling his right leg, his features twisted with pain. My leg, he complained. I am certain I have sprained it. Of course, it's swollen. Oh, ouch. I can't possibly stand on it. Then his hands flew to his head and he exclaimed, a bump. I thought so. And what a bump. The swelling is approximately round and of considerable diameter. He reached up to the shelf above his bed for a small polished metal mirror and stared gloomily into it for a long while. Musius cleared his throat and ventured a respectful question. How did you come to be in the wardrobe, sir? Xantippus gave the boys a long mournful look. I was assaulted last night, he said with a sigh. Okay, so guys, a couple of things. I'll show you the picture of him in the closet. Here is the papyrus. It's the paper that they used to write on. And there's Xantippus. Here's the wardrobe, this big thing here, and the boys. Now, he said he had a big wound on his head, a big diameter from math class. Do you remember what the diameter is? The distance from this edge of the circle through the middle of the circle to the other side. It had a big diameter from this side of the circle through to the other side of the circle. All right, I'm not going to ask you any questions. Just enjoy the read tonight, today.